Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the canyons on a uh, chilly but beautiful morning for a drive. It's been raining up here the last two days, and so there's a little residual dampness. I was kind of hoping I might actually get to do a wet shoot for once, but uh, it's uh, it's perfect for driving, and uh, with our 2020 McLaren GT, uh, it should be perfect conditions. I've been pretty excited to try this thing for a little bit. Basically, what the GT is, is the evolution of the McLaren 570 GT that we saw back in 2017. Actually, ironically, when I drove the McLaren 570 GT in 2017, that was January 2017, where we had so much rain that it actually ended the drought. So uh, here we are, and it's been raining, so I've actually been driving this thing in the rain all week, and it's been quite nice. The point of the McLaren GT is to take the 570 GT concept further. Uh, think 911 Turbo, think Aston Martin DB11. They actually wanted to make a GT car, or as much of a GT car as you can make, starting with a mid-engine platform. So the tub fundamentally is the same tub as the sports series car, the 570S and the 600LT. They have reworked the body in a way that, yes, some of you accurately pointed out, does resemble the C8 Corvette, uh, also lightly resembles the NSX, but I think it's actually prettier in uh, than both of those cars, especially from the rear. It's certainly uh, more elegant and, uh, a, 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 and expensive and premium looking than either of those two cars. Um, rather than taking the 570 series uh, uh, 3.8 liter twin turbo engine, they take the four liter twin turbo engine out of the 720 and they detune that down to 612 horsepower and 465 pounds of torque. And they do that so you get more usable torque at the low end and you don't have as much kind of like revving uh, and raciness at the top. The big party trick is the trunk. The, G, the 570 GT had that innovative side hatch that was kind of cool. This has the largest trunk of any, or most trunk volume of any mid-engine uh, mid car. So it's got 14.8 cubic feet back here above the uh, engine and then 5.3 in the trunk. McLaren would love to tell you that that's more room in the back in the trunks than the Bentley Continental GT, although the way it's configured, it may not be quite as uh, usable as the Bentleys. Um, you've got a kind of divided area back here. You can put a surfboard, you can put skis, there's a little pouch back there so you can put a cover on the tips of your surfboard or skis so they don't damage you or the car. And then there's this material back here that looks premium and it feels kind of like egg crate. It doesn't it's not my favorite material, but apparently it's incredibly durable, which, uh, okay. And there's some cargo nets, etc. Uh, some options on this car, base price, 210,000 as tested 253. It's got the premium package. It's got the elite package. It has carbon ceramic brakes. It has MSO, uh, bright work. It has a uh, nose lift, which is optional, strangely enough. Um, and it has uh, the Bowers and Wilkins stereo. It, uh, it's it's got a lot of stuff. So 250. So right in the wheelhouse of a fully, fully, fully loaded uh, Porsche 911 Turbo S. Right in the wheelhouse of an Aston Martin DB11. And uh, you know they're they're going at them. So how does the softer McLaren drive? We'll put it in D. We'll go to active. I'm going to go track. Uh, full performance mode for the powertrain. Sport for the suspension, and we'll go up the hill first. Here we go. All right, uh, well, although the intent is something of a departure for McLaren, the result definitely feels like a McLaren. to the Sport Series cars, same space. Uh, this has uh, power seats, which frankly, they're not my favorite seats that McLaren makes. I actually, despite the, the complications in getting into the buckets, 
I think once I'm in the buckets, I, I prefer them. Um, although the intent here is to use it as a GT car and a daily driver, part of what makes a daily driver to me is being able to park it, being able to get in and out of it multiple times a day, multiple times an hour with ease. Um, unfortunately, the Sport Series Mono Cell, the, do the way the doors open, is just not as easy to get in and out of as the 720. The 720 has roof cutouts, so you can plop in from above as opposed to having to duck under this heavy roof pillar here. So I, I find that my... The first thing I think about is, well, McLaren has built a car that's designed to be used every day, get in and out of, and yet their other car, uh, which is not necessarily designed for that, is actually better at that. So that's, that's thing one, where I think they've kind of missed. Nevertheless, Sports Series McLaren I drove was a 600 LT, which is turned up way, way out to aggro, and this is the opposite. It's got way less of a peaky engine, it's got way less aggressive settings on the gearbox and the clutches, so when it shifts, it shifts much, much smoother, even in track mode, which we're in right now. Ceramic brakes are the same. They're optional, you can get steels, but I'm not really sure how they feel. Probably fine. And then you've got a bespoke concept uh, Pirelli uh, Corsa tire on this. That's, it's, a, it's a UHP tire, obviously, but it is designed to be able to handle the wet. What's interesting about this engine, the four liter engine is, it's got a smaller turbo on it than the 720S, so it spools a little lower, you get a very punchy mid-range, and then you don't get that craziness up top. It sort of dies off a little bit, trades ultimate horsepower, yeah, it flattens out over 6,500, although peak power is 75. Steering is certainly a little more relaxed than the LT, and that's a good thing. The LT is a, is a two hands on the wheel, you know, sort of darting experience, whereas this, it's a little more mellowed out, but you still got that beautiful McLaren steering feel, still hydraulic steering. It's still, I mean, compared to a front engine GT car, uh, and I'll use the Aston as a comparison, this is a certainly the preferable motoring experience to that. This car has a $3,500 optional sports exhaust, uh, and it's still very quiet by McLaren standards. Probably the, the quietest McLaren I've been in, actually. That's not to say it doesn't make engaging sounds, but you don't get any of those gunshots uh, on the hard shifts. There's not really a lot, of, a lot of throat to it. And here, here's the tunnel. Let's see. We'll do a third gear in the tunnel, windows down. Third gear from 3500. Yeah. So it's fairly mellow. It's not that high pitched scream. Good mid corner balance. I can tell, I'm not breaking traction, but I can tell that the tendency would be, be towards a mild push, which is exactly where you want it for a car like this. We've got the electrochromic roof, which is the, the LCD tint, so I can hit that, and it will get more clear. Oh wow, and you can see that beautiful sky today, amazing clouds, and then I can hit it here. And it gets dark again. That's expensive, but it's cool. I hope that continues to work properly, but because that, that's awesome. Uh, the brakes, as I mentioned, are ceramic, and they are very effective. And you've got that really unique McLaren brake feel. It takes a few minutes to get used to, but I actually believe that now... Uh, uh, clear. I believe that, uh, that once you're used to it, it is the preferred 
pedal feel. Uh, it's better. It's I, I like modulating it better than pretty much all other GT cars and, and sports cars in terms of pedal. Well, let's go up here. A lot of turbo noise. Really, really smooth gearbox. This is the smoothest that McLaren has ever programmed this gearbox. And you know where it really comes out? I, I know this isn't what you want to see, but I'm going to slow down real quick. And we're going to turn all this stuff off. We're just going to go back to auto. What's really interesting is I, I spent more time in automatic in this car driving around the city than I really ever have before. So right there, take my foot off the brake, they've programmed some idle creep like an automatic car. When I go to accelerate, the clutches engage at a very low RPM. In the LTs and the higher cars, they let you get some reviness before the clutches engage, especially the more aggressive you are. This thing is more smooth on and off the pedal when you're going uh, slowly in traffic. And even if you're just cruising along like this, normal, quiet, it, it's shifting up. I'm now doing 38 miles an hour in fifth gear at 1800 RPM. It'll shift up at 2000 RPM. So let's uh, let's not do that anymore. And we're back off. There's the right gear. There's definitely still lag, don't get me wrong. You know, there's still lag under 3000 RPM, but there's less of it and you can moving forward it doesn't it doesn't behave like it's trying to impersonate a manual it behaves like it's impersonating a full auto and I find that to be very very interesting curb weight is 3318 pounds which is almost exactly 300 more than the LT That's, that's pretty much your spread for this model range. It's 3,000 and change versus 3,300 and change. So that's how much leather, stereo, glass, carpeting, and extra body work you get on this car. Now, that doesn't mean you're not getting a McLaren. You are getting a McLaren. It's 0 to 60 in 3 1, and it's top speed of 203 miles an hour. So your GT car is still crazy fast. And I almost, I wanted to bring a friend of mine this morning who had never been in a McLaren just to prove to you that the quote, slow, soft McLaren is still, you know, if you're, if you're the average driver, this is still going to be the fastest car you've ever been in probably. It's mental. It's mental. But they have tweaked it for a whole different type of character, which I find very interesting. Shall we do a launch? We're gonna put it back in automatic. Stop, auto. Can we launch? Do we have to go ESC off? ESC off, launch. Confirm selection, launch. Launch mode is unavailable. Let's put everything in track. How about now? Well, so so much for that about manual. Launch mode unavailable. Huh. You see on. You know, right when I was about to be like, these electronics are working great. Launch mode unavailable. Well, um, you know, that's unfortunate. Everything's in full kill mode. ESC is off. ESC is off. Nobody's behind us. ESC off not possible. See owner's manual. Oh wait, launch mode active. I just got it, launch mode active. All right, here we go. And go. Good grip off the line. Very interesting. Even with a coarse attire, I, 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 I genuinely don't know what I did to make that not work. I genuinely don't know what I did to fix it. I can say that that is not as seamless as Porsche's system, in which you just stop anywhere and do it. Uh, I didn't have any training, but I, I thought it was the same as the rest of them, maybe not. Nevertheless, rear drive car, Corsa tires, very 
impressive launch, minimal wheel spin. <laughs> yeah, this is really fast. <laughs> really fast. Very good. Very stable. A little more body roll, which I like. I like body roll, and I like when suspensions suspend. This car has a conventional sway bar setup, not the funky one you get with the 720, but it does get the adaptive shocks from the 720. So right now, track mode. So I was feeling all the little stuff in the road. Now I just clicked it down to sport mode. Sport mode has smoothed out all the cracks, but lets me feel all the big bumps. And comfort mode makes it like buttery smooth for the city. I was shocked at how good well, I'm not shocked that it's McLaren, it's what they do, but the comfort mode really gives you the sort of land yacht wallow, which pairs in a very strangely with a high rev <laughs> 4 liter V8 and a dual clutch gearbox. Your, your butt is feeling the American land yacht wallow, which is not an entirely undesirable sensation, mind you. But the rest of your body is uh, is like, why this doesn't match this? This is what this is weird. Yeah. Look, it's a lovely car. The question is this: Does anybody want? a softer McLaren than the 570S or the 720. I don't know. I mean, I assume they did a survey and said, you know, what would you do with your McLaren if it held more stuff? And somebody filled out surfing and skiing. And so they made a car that holds a surfboard and holds skis. Does that mean those people are going to put snow tires on their car and take it to, to the mountain? I don't know. Uh, I'm certain, I'm not certain, but if I had to guess, I would guess that it's not really the trunk space that's keeping those people from doing those activities. If I had to guess, it was they didn't want to drive their McLaren in the snow, they were too afraid to, or they didn't want to get salty ocean water all over their interior after surfing. McLaren has sort of addressed these things, sort of. Will the people show up and spend the money? I don't know. It's me. Like I said in the beginning of the video, the problem with this car is, even if it's great, the 720 is still more comfortable. And to me, there's very little difference between a brand new McLaren and a lightly used McLaren. And a lightly used 720S is the same price as this. Now, it doesn't hold skis or a surfboard, but as far as my comfort as as a driver, it's more comfortable. Uh, and it's got a very big frunk, and I haven't really complained about uh, it not holding things, so there's that. Now, final list, goods and bads before I get out of here. Good, uh, the cockpit is very bright and airy. I love the windows, I love the, uh, I don't love white leather, but I love how much light gets in here. The paddle shifters. These paddles themselves are incredibly beautiful, milled, milled uh, really nice chamfered edges. They feel like my Audemars Piguet Royal Oak watch. Someone has paid attention there. Um, and the uh, steering feel far better than front engine GTs. The detail work in the cabin is just excellent. Um, and the ride uh, is extremely good. Uh, on this very same road with the Aston Martin DBS, their top tier GT, it was much improved over the DB11, but you still have kind of a harsh, bouncy ride. You're still taking some hops over those big bumps at the mid-corner, which in these McLarens does not happen. So that's the good. The bad. 720 is easier to get in and out of still. Uh, the screen works really well, but I have to turn my head sideways with my Dylan Optics polarized sunglasses to read them correctly. For a GT car, there's no adaptive cruise control, which is strange. Um, you have a regular cruise control, uh, but no adaptive, which for a GT car, I would like. Also, still 
not much room in the pedal box if you're smaller than me or smaller feet not a huge deal but for a GT car an everyday car that could be a problem compared to a Porsche or an Aston Martin or a BMW uh, M6 or whatever that has a more more leg space um, and then uh, the door handles McLaren had figured it out with the buttons. They had they have buttons on the 720, there's buttons on the 570, and then they got rid of the buttons and they put these funky door opening mechanisms and when you press them, they don't pop the door. You have to press it, which unlocks the door, but then you have to actually grab the door and open it. That's not so good. So those are my gripes. Um, other than that, I mean, it's a wonderful car. Uh, and at the, at the price, it is aggressively priced to cross shop with a 911 Turbo S or an Aston DB11 or, or those types of cars. Um, so thank you for watching uh, to McLaren. Thank you for lending me the car uh, this week. I've enjoyed it. And uh, I will see you guys next time. Bye.